Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. It's a Bud Light boycott disaster. Americans drink two billion less beers. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from the Daily Mail, Americans drank 2 billion fewer beers last year, the lowest since 1999, and boycott of Bud Light over Dylan Mulvaney tie-up is to blame. Plus, Gen Zers are ditching alcohol completely. From Fox Business, Modelo Parent still reaping benefits from the Bud Light controversy. Constellation Brands Modelo Especial remains the top-selling U.S. beer. And this woke destruction of an entire consumer products category is not just due to one Bud Light brand. This affects Anheuser-Busch, but it affects all of their brands. It affects the beer category completely. Beer has been trending down. It's not as hot as a category as it used to be. But when you have a consumer failure like they had with Bud Light, it turns off people to the entire category. It's less business for everyone in that industry. That's why this deliberate woke messaging that they try to push into consumer products is so bad for the brand, but it's bad for business. It's bad for their entire market. And it wasn't just the beer category that got destroyed. The Marvels made superhero movies no longer a safe bet. From National Review, are comic book movies doomed? From Axios, superhero movies boom goes bust in 2023. And yes, DC had plenty of movies that underperformed in 2023, but DC, except for Batman, has pretty much been riding the coattails of Marvel. When Marvel was successful with the Avengers and generating hundreds of millions and billions of dollars worth of ticket sales, DC was able to put out Aquaman and do more than a billion dollars with a movie that, let's be honest, was not good at all. It was difficult to watch. Now Marvel, because they had to put their woke messaging inside the Marvel brand, has destroyed the entire superhero category. Look at this. A remake of Willy Wonka is going to do $465 million worldwide? That's ridiculous. There's no way it should be outgrossing a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Keep in mind, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is supposed to have something to do with continuity. Wanting to see the first one, wanting to see the next one, wanting to keep up with the continuity and the intertwined stories. A one-off remake of a Willy Wonka movie is supposed to do more business than a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie? Absolutely ridiculous. But that's where we're at now because people couldn't help themselves but push messaging in consumer products where they have no business. There can be messages in consumer products, but those messages should be appealing to you on a human level. And Disney, while they admit they're in some serious trouble with their Marvel Cinematic Universe brand, have not admitted the real reason they're in trouble right now. The messaging is a higher priority for Disney than making money for their shareholders, than honoring their brands, keeping in mind that the Marvel brand is not something that was even created at Disney. It was something Disney acquired in 2009. You would think they would have some respect for what the creators of the Marvel brand and what the CEO of Marvel, Ike Perlmutter, wanted the brands to represent. But no, they have an important agenda to push. From the Daily Mail, beer sales have lost their fizz with the boycott of Bud Light over its campaign with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney and changing drinking habits to blame. Sales were down 5% in the U.S. for the first nine months of last year and on track for the lowest annual level since 1999, according to industry group Beer Marketers Insights. In real terms, this means shipments were on track to fall below 200 million barrels, about 9 million fewer than in 2021. That's about 2 billion fewer beers drank by Americans. A boycott of Bud Light over its tie-up with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney is a key reason. Sales of the once leading brand are down almost 30% by volume and beer drinkers switching to other beers has not made up for the dramatic fall. But changing consumer habits are also dampening sales as younger Americans in particular are increasingly turning away from alcoholic drinks. This is when you have to creatively enhance your perception of your brand. Alyssa Heinersheet, who was in charge of the Bud Light brand, thought it was necessary to make the brand more socially progressive as opposed to sticking with what the brand represented 
and coming up with more creative ways of building on that foundation. You can't just change the identity of a brand. It works completely against the brand. People will go and they'll buy a Bud Light because it makes them look normal. It used to make them look normal. Now it makes them look like they're a dangerous individual that may not be the gender that they appear to be. Or it makes them look like they're the kind of person that wants to jump into a bathtub with Dylan Mulvaney. I personally am neither of those two things. If I go to a bar, sometimes I'll get a drink and I'll just kind of hang out and drink the drink and relax. The idea of the drink is to kind of blend in with the scenery. It's not to stand out that maybe you're transsexual. The Bud Light boycott saw sales nosedive and Modelo Especial take over as America's number one beer brand. The firestorm, which began in April 2023, saw Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, lose $390 million in second quarter sales compared to the year before. In addition to that, of course, they were doing incredible, aggressive promotions where picking up Bud Light and buying some of their other Anheuser-Busch products was essentially free after the rebate. Even with that, they lost money in sales. By December, sales of the beer had still not recovered despite the company teaming up with the NFL and promoting a new promotion with the UFC. In the four weeks ending December 9th, Bud Light's retail store sales were down 28% compared with the same period in 2022, according to Nielsen IQ data analyzed by consulting firm Bump Williams and cited by the Wall Street Journal. Mexican import Modelo Especial, which is owned by competitor Constellation Brands in the United States, overtook Bud Light as the top-selling U.S. beer by dollar sales in retail stores last year, the projected sale of under 200 million barrels of beer for this year is well down on recent years. In 2021, the U.S. beer industry shipped 208.6 million barrels, according to data from the National Beer Wholesalers Association. A traditional keg in a bar is equal to half a barrel. National Beer Wholesalers Association President Craig Purser said in a speech to wholesalers in October, this is an industry-wide five-alarm fire. As well as the Bud Light boycott, two other reasons are behind the slump. Younger Americans are drinking less, while those that do prefer so-called hard seltzers. A survey last year by data firm MRI Simmons found Generation Z had the lowest alcohol consumption of any adult age group in the U.S. Some 58% of legal drinking age respondents said they had drunk alcohol in the past six months. Sales of non-alcoholic beer shot up by 32% through October last year, according to Nielsen IQ. Mounting health and wellness concerns have helped fuel the spike in non-alcoholic beers, with younger drinkers more likely to opt for a 0% beverage, researchers said. And among drinkers, hard seltzers are becoming increasingly popular, alongside relative newcomers including canned cocktails and malt beverages such as Boston Beer's Twisted Tea. In the U.S., revenues from the hard seltzer market are expected to reach $37.7 billion in 2024, according to Statista. White Claw and truly hard seltzers dominate the space, but other spirits-based seltzers, including High Noon, have been collectively growing strong double digits and gaining shelf space and occasions from beer, according to David Steinman, Beer Marketers Insights Vice President. So for the marketing executives that think if they just put more progressive and woke messaging inside of their consumer brands that don't actually fit with the consumer brands, but maybe they can rebrand the consumer brands and get people to be more interested, get young people to be particularly more interested because supposedly Gen Z is really interested in woke messaging and multiple genders and global warming. It's not actually working. It's actually destroying each of the individual brands. And when it comes to beer and when it comes to superhero movies, it's actually destroying the entire business categories. When it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, it does seem like companies are starting to dial that back. So hopefully their marketing departments will start to come to understand, no, people don't want a purpose when they go to buy a beer. All they want is a beer. When you go to see a movie, all you want to see is a good movie, not some representation nonsense that has nothing to do with telling a cool story. A story should be relatable no matter what the character looks like. A beer should be fun. That's it. When you think beer, you should think fun. You shouldn't think, maybe I should change my gender. Maybe I should be more open to homosexual relationships. That's not what a beer product is for. A beer is for fun, for blending in, and feeling like you are equivalent to everyone else. Not that you're special and different from everyone else. You're not going to get that from beer. Let me know what you think of all this. 
in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.